Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. What? You did? Your survival, let alone success, barely registered in my projections. Now, all I need to do is check my transmission data bank. Mobius is always filling it up with his psychotic calls. Oh yes, there's the schematics, just like you said. How truthful. Yes, hmm, ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes, um, hmm. No, I mean yes. You just need to analyze these technologies for a moment. They are extremely advanced, you know? I know how these technologies work. Of course I know. If you remember, we described them in clearly abstract, contradictory statements before. Why would we do that if we weren't certain on... on how to use them? Yes, so let me... hmm, a bit, huh? I'll figure it out. So you're saying it's the X2 array, not the antenna I should be examining. That was most likely my plan, yes. Let me check something. Of course, I have it. The override sequence to open the Forbidden Zone door is hidden in the schematics. Well, not hidden. It's actually right there, behind the programming equivalent of coffee stains. It's embedded in what seems to be recursive code. It's badly commented there and there. Oh, and no pointers. Very sloppy, Mobius. You see, using the antenna to boost the emitter's sonic frequency, and the stealth suit to bypass the Forbidden Zone lock, yes, that could work. Was that my plan? It must have been. Sometimes I truly surprise myself. The door is open, and now Mobius will get his. Biological? <laughs> Ridiculous. I mean, technically, these items could all be used to put you back together once you had your brain. But for now, they can be used in the name of aggression. The door should be unsealed. Now, instead of being subjected to threats, we can now send an equally threatening message to Mobius. And that message is science! Deliver this message, and Big Mountain shall be freed from Mobius's reign of terror. Um, you can go now. That's your cue. Injecting stim pack. You are no match for science. Does that feel better? Does that feel better? Bad guys dealt with.
Prepare to be attacked to by Dr. Morbius! Oh, my minion! Sting them in the name of all for Saturn! Just put your feet on your feet. Does that feel better? Injecting stim pack. Was that all? Fighting over. Oh. 
Was that all? Ready? Steady. Ready. If you want to be sneaky, turn off your pit boy life. Cessation of hostilities complete. Ready? Steady. Fighting. Bad guys, stop it.
glad that no one has ever been as unnoticed as me. confusion so hard to tell these days you seem familiar somehow I'm guessing uh, you're here for your brain perhaps it's just up there uh, such a nice brain young very bright a uh, little hard to see you uh, can you walk into my left your uh, right FOV coon ah that's it you're coming into focus nicely Depth perception is a problem with this old monitor of mine. Went black a while ago. <laughs> That's old age for you. Should look at getting the visual nerves reattached. It's just that the right eye would see the wrong things. <laughs> the flying tortoises ooh, were the worst. Would you care for a mentat? I love Mentats. Delicious and smarty. I have all sorts of amazingly science-horrific thoughts and ideas when those chalky tablets are zipping through my biogel. I forget them all not long after, though. Especially with the data constipating my memory core. Afraid binary streams might shoot out my chassis. Had to start using the dome floor and walls here to inscribe equations. Although I've somewhat lost track of where they start and end. Really? That implies preconceived notions, theories, and a hypothesis about this meeting? Please extrapolate. What was I uh, supposed to be like? After all, it might be worth a cognitive realignment if your theoretical Mobius is better than I. Oh, a variety of raisins. You're something of a homily. The anomaly? You're really quite special, and not in the cranially challenged way. You see, you are the most successful brain extraction experiment ever performed here at Big Mountain. A victim of your own success, as it were. If you were to go back with what your brain knows about the procedure, well... Your brain could be popped back in and you could walk right out of here. Can't have brains moving around of their own volition. I'm not sure, except that I'm sure there's a very good reason for it. I have very good reasons for almost everything I do. Even if I forget them occasionally. Although I feel this one is especially important. Oh, oh well. Oh, curiosity. I experience that less now that I know everything. Oh, maybe it was when I found out some unpleasant answers. Mm hmm. The ghosts aren't real? That changes everything. Why, I can save my computing power for other perceptual impossibilities. 
Please be my guest. Uh, the receptor is there. And the side-switching wobbly bob, uh, just turn that. Good, good, better. Oh. Oh, yes, that feels wonderful. This is even better than my afternoon Mentats break. Oh, I was probably tripping hard on Psycho when I sent that. Had to work myself up to it. Not usually violent, except when I am. Then, watch out! So many chems, such varieties. Whenever I take Mentats, I can feel my entire chassis breathe like a big spherical lung. <laughs> As for the Psycho, sometimes get the chem dispositories in my tank all switched up. Go in the wrong tube. Still, served its purpose. I find things curious as well. Go on. Well, every scientist needs an army. Mine came to me after these rather large scorpions kept coming in from the desert. <laughs> like poisonous frosting. How scary, I thought. But they had survived when nothing else had. Perfect candidates for improvement, as a reward for their tenacity. Then I thought, what if they shot energy bolts, and acted as walking eyes, and data-drained computers, and acted as bullhorns? Then I made them bigger. Then I thought about custard. I do so love custard. Or was it mustard? Mustard custard. Mm, I miss sugars and salts. Did I? <laughs> Maybe I did. Can't have them leaving. Is some reason for it. Ethics or, uh, mm, conscience? You and your brain are quite alike. I'm sure it knows the reasons better than I do. Dr. Mobius. Rather catchy, isn't it? It's my name, and my new name overwrote the old one. This name's as real as you or I. Although I believe your brain expressed similar incredulity at the nature of such an appellation. Someone's been watching too many old world science fiction movies, it said. I believe it meant me. I must admit I have a vulnerability for holotape fantasies of planets and robots and all that is forbidden. As for the name I was born with... Like the Think Tank, we were all reprogrammed to forget them, take on new names. It enforces the recursion loop in our perception programming. Now, trap is a rather harsh word, like excrement. Not an inappropriate word, but still rather harsh. But, yes, I did uh, take some liberties with their programming. It's all right, they don't remember. I certainly didn't until you said trap, and then I said excrement, and then... The radar fence to keep the think tank hemmed in wasn't really enough. They keep testing things. They would have found a way to disarm it. I suspect I have Plan 9s in place, but I may have coded myself to forget them, just in case. They're probably very dangerous, lethal, or worse. So I had to do something else to keep them occupied here. Or as you like to say, trapped. I prefer to have several Plan 9s in case the 7s fail. I don't know if they're stupid. 
Dr. O, which is actually not his real name multiplied, since you can't multiply his real name in the first place. Ouroboros, Klein, they have all forgotten themselves. And not only themselves, but the world. Sense of time and history. All that is left is what's here. I reprogrammed their chronometers, geometers, and cartography programs. This is now their world, here, Big Mountain. It was a merciful lobotomy, really, thinking back. They were my friends, but sometimes they would take things too far. And the world isn't ready for that kind of too-far thing-taking. That's my professional opinion, anyway. And I am told I was once <laughs> quiet professional. Is it? I suppose it is. But really, they started the whole excrement hole behavior loop in the first place. Well, it's simple. Despite their many failings, they are rather bright. They are the think tank for a reason. That I didn't change. Without something to distract them, make them afraid, they would simply deduce what had happened. And when they start deucing it up... Then you came along, the final variable solved. They saw that their world was larger than they perceived. Bacteria, finally able to see its host. There have been other visitors to make them doubt their perceptions, but you are the one who dialed back their monitor micromagnifiers. You were irrefutable proof that there was a world outside. And then there was the whole brain fiasco, which forced me to take steps. See, your brain had a special kind of uh, a wrinkle, a uniquity that they had never thought to try in all their countless escape attempts. Yes, very good. I should have Mentats ingest you instead of the other way around. Hmm, Mentats? In any event, you showed up at the think tank, and because you had suffered a cranial injury in just the right place, bullets in the head are usually much more fatal, and yours was a light case of bullet headitis. But it was enough for the autodoc in the sink to change its programming to fix the problem. And the brain extraction technology for once worked. That gave the think tank the knowledge its brains shouldn't, uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't possess. With that knowledge, the procedure can be reversed. If they obtain that procedural data, they can use it to mush and modify their cranial selves into hosts to slip past the radar fence. I'm sure of it. And once they're off the reservation... Uh, not much, except they contaminated Big Mountain and installed new ideas in the think tank. One caused a great deal of infrastructure damage with his brain and smartiness. Ruthless, that one, played a little rough with the trains. But the last one was the most dangerous. Him uh, slipping away. That was almost as bad as the think tank escaping. The first one, the ruthless one who smashed up our toy trains, asked for weapons, power. 
Items he could use to destroy a nation with force. The other... The other asked a different question, and with it, got the true answer about what makes nations, and what breaks them. He spoke to the think tank, to Klein, showed them the flag of the old world, and it made them remember all of it, all that had happened. They shared things with him that they shouldn't. He now carries those ideas, that knowledge, elsewhere. Yes, I certainly wouldn't loop it on purpose, purpose, purpose. I am far too sophisticated to make such a childish error, error, error. Oh, I don't think... The X2 antenna can be used to focus your alpha wave frequency thought patterns. The sneaky suit? Why, it houses a cardiac regulator. And the sonic sound wave projecto emitter was never intended as a weapon. It was a medicinal vertebrae pulse desensitizer. In short, brains, a heart, and courage. Spine. I think there was a story once where a band of murderous thugs sought these things. They had them all the time in the story. Didn't stop them from murdering to get them. And it won't stop the think tank either. Oh, that means my plan is a total failure. That is unfortunate. Oh well, at least I tried. Yes, my overly aggressive Camda broadcast was designed to keep reinforcing the forget, fear, rinse, and repeat program. Oh, and the get me the things to castrate your only possible escape attempt. But I couldn't delete you or your arrival any more than I could the other visitors. Only so much science can do when you started talking to them. You're really quite difficult to ignore, you know. It's because you're, well, bah, rather intriguing, if you'll forgive an old brain for saying so. Yes, ye Oh, intriguing. I've never been killed before. Although, after that time I got that phlegmy discharge in my biogel, <laughs> I wished I had been. Well, if there's going to be killing, I defer to your expertise in this matter. How should we begin? Engineering viruses? Cancerotic beams? Atomics? Electrocutioning? Or should I summon my minions? Yes, my minions. Whoa, have they not constructed themselves yet? They can assemble the minions. No. 
Steady. 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 Cessation of hostilities complete. Time to fight. Starting combat. Just kidding. This is a pre-recorded attack message indicating that our on? desire to commit violence on you.
I'm running out of floor space for my calculations! If you... in the That seems to be rather hormonal of you. Flight or fight response, you know. Hard to cut that out completely. Your brain is here, safe with me. We chat over mentats. Do you? You seem fine without it. And does it even want to go back with you? Maybe you should ask it. It's quite independent, has all manner of opinions. Tell you what, I'll leave it up to your brain. If it wants to go, then fine. If not, well, you should respect its wishes. Indeed, the uh, goodbye part of our little chat then. Uh, goodbye, uh, please mind the equations on the floor. themselves in out of the wasteland. And where have we been? Hmm? 
crawling through pits of radioactive muck again? Ah, lovely. Figure that out, have we? Would you like a cookie? Yes, well, believe me, the opposite is equally true. Good lord, have you bathed at all since they pulled me out of you? Well, I see sarcasm hasn't eluded you. Fine, perhaps now isn't the best time, but it's the principle of the thing. Oh, had I? What exactly will you do if I don't? Not put me back in that cranial dungeon you call your head? Heavens forbid. By all means, if the idea of spending the rest of your days as a true lobotomite appeals to you. Actually, come to think of it, you probably wouldn't mind that, would you? After the think tank extracted me from your skull, they fell to bickering amongst themselves. I'm sad to say we were quite forgotten about. Dr. Mobius saw an opportunity to gain some leverage and had me spirited away to his dome. I don't know. I'm afraid the trauma of our separation rendered me quite insensate. I didn't come around until I was safely ensconced in this tank. I'm quite sure whatever he did was highly scientific, though. Hardly. Dr. Mobius keeps a close optical sensor on the goings-on at the think tank. As soon as he saw the opportunity, he took it. Well, uh... Well, that's a fine how-do-you-do. Me! A, uh, quote, dick, unquote. As if I'm the one responsible for the way you carry on gadding about the wastes. I'm not the one that makes us clamber around technus-infested ancient vaults or go charging off to New Vegas on missions of ill-conceived revenge. And have we forgotten who got us shot in the head and buried in a shallow grave? Hmm? Do you think I enjoy that little moment? I most certainly am not. I am the seat of all reason and logic in our little partnership. All those feelings that motivate you, that sense of righteousness and that rush you get when you help someone, do you know where those come from? Glands. They come from glands. Free of the tyranny of your ape-like and primitive endocrine system, I can see how foolish your motives are. I... well... Look, it's all a very complex system of biofeedback and other things I wouldn't expect you to understand. Oh, all right. Perhaps I am, but at least I'm logical about it. I'm not going to lie to you. The prospect is definitely not that appealing. Look at it from my perspective. Here I have peace, quiet, and safety. Well... Barring the odd rogue scorpion. In your head, I've got poison, radiation, grisly injuries, and biological functions. Do you know how much more you can get done when you're not constantly looking for places to urinate? It's quite a lot, I can tell you. Overrated biological feedback. Believe me, you only feel that way because you've got all that meat. Oozing hormones. Hmm, I suppose you're right. That does call certain assumptions into question, doesn't it? Indeed, quite the conundrum. How do you suppose we resolve it? I suppose there might be some advantage to that, yes. There's a chance that the reintegration would create some improved synergy between us. Well, I suppose you've convinced me well enough. I'll rejoin your body if that's your final decision. Unfortunately, before we get to that stage of the proceedings, we have a problem. Even if I could settle myself back in your skull and reconnect all those pesky nerve endings, Dr. Mobius doesn't have the tools here. 
We will have to make use of Dr. Klein's lab, and I rather doubt the brains are inclined to share. And you believe them? Really? I know you were recently deprived of my fabulous advice, but... Really? Once I'm delivered into their clutches, they'll find a way past the radar fence and the whole Mojave will be their playground. And that is assuming, of course, that one of them doesn't take a fancy to our body and decide to slip his own brain into it instead. Well, I suppose I do miss those endorphin rushes when we save the day. All right, what's the plan? Right, look out, Think Tank. This brain is coming out of its jar. I suppose now that we're reunited, you'll want to fill your torso up with those other meaty parts the Think Tank took from us. Personally, I think your upgrades are quite a bit better. But now that I'm with you, the Sync's Autodoc can plug them back in no problem. Right then, off we go. Clyde will be in for a nasty shock when he realizes the pacification field won't work on a mind and body reunited. I see you and your brain reached a compromise. If I recall, I had a plan that was working, or whatever it was. I don't think it reached fruition. I would recall fruit if it had happened. I wasn't trying to kill them, just keep them out of trouble. What was that plan? Blast! I probably uh, wrote it down on the floor somewhere. Something ingenious and needlessly complicated, I expect. I may have already told you and forgotten it. I forgot I had forgotten pencils until one day I found one. Spent days studying its purpose before my memory circuit kicked in. Felt quite silly. Well, you could try and appeal to their humanity. <laughs> That's a tired cliché. And really, when they were humans, they weren't very good humans. Well, there's many things they have forgotten, sitting in their bowls. Friendship, the thrill of discovery. Love, masturbation, the usual. Much like your brain, I am certain there is something you can spark within each of them. Memories, hormones. A wise man once said, the eyes do more than see. Make them see, if you can. Or, if not, you can always make them succumb to fear. <laughs> it certainly worked for me, for a time. Then you came along, and bravery and or desperation trumped that little idea. Back to the drawing board, I suppose. Or is this the end? Hard to tell. Oh, tell them I'm still alive. We had a nice chat, and we agree on a few things. That's true, isn't it? Or you could kill me and lie about it. Either way, it would be interesting. And if you are partial to lying and deception, well, you could tell them a ludicrous lie. The more over the top, the better. That's my experience. They're more than a little gullible. Better make it convincing, though, or it'll be the dissection table and vivisectors for you. And if you speak of me, please try and make me look good. I am Dr. Mobius, after all, not some lab assistant teacher's aide. Why, of course you can.
You require some additional services? You require some additional... Lobotomite returns. Our Lobotomite. Has Dr. Mobius been denominated into scrap metal and voice module parts as we hoped? I recommend watching your tone with me, Lobotomite. Now, your brain. Hand it over, or we'll extract it again. And what could we possibly have to speak about? You have the brain, we have the technology. All you must do is surrender. With it, we can finally leave this place. I cannot tell you how boring this place gets, chopping up the landscape and everything in it. And we have so many questions to ask your brain first, about this Mojave place, a fertile testing ground for our experiments. You are lying. No, you are not. Your heartbeat? Perspiration, all excessively confident and sure of yourself. Why would you reason with that maniac? He'll destroy us all! Nonsense! Confer? Colleagues? Those are two words I do not recognize. Dr. Klein, I must... intersect. Please, do not harm the lobotomite. I'm not going to harm it. I'm going to dissect it until it's dead. Why the sudden intersection, Dollar? I cannot stand a breathing, a sweet breathing organism, breathing in and out to suddenly not breathe. We must keep it alive for steady. A slow study. Gala, these vocalized pauses are unlike you. What do you care? Klein, um, are you sure we've calculated all the combat probabilities here? I mean, the lobotomite confronted Mobius. Plus, you know, we haven't had a C-O-M-B-A-T drill in forever. I don't think we could form a tactical attack triangle if we wanted to. Releasing the W-O-M-B-A-T was not my plan, O, oh, so get off my voice box. Silencing opinionators. Why are you acting like this? You've never refused to commit necessary surgery before. And this lobotomite needs its surgery. What is wrong with you? You sound brain scrubbed, blindly agreeing with the lobotomite. What? If I may, I feel as if I must be the voice of reason here. This lobotomite is much like us. Regarding even animals and pets is nothing more than avenues to promote 
Science. There is good here. Instead of ending its life on the table, we should prolong its suffering in the name of science. Like good old Gabe, the finest of lab specimens. Why am I even listening to you fools? Enough of this mutinous chorus. If there's a word I hate, it's mutiny. And the word jism, which never made any sense to me. It's ridiculous putting j and zm together like that. Nonsense! I count as five. Like the mighty human hand I once had, with its five penises clenched in a fist. Nonsense! The mathematics of this situation are on our side, Lobotomite. I believe... No, wait. Hmm. Carry the two, then... Hmm. If this were a democracy, I would be concerned. We are too scientific for that. So just surrender. You dare use logic against me? That's no deal at all! There's a whole world beyond the crater, filled with ideas and possibilities! We could have escaped, seen it all for ourselves, tested it, routed at it, made it squirm. For you? And for science? I have a strange sensation that I would like that. How odd. Very well, partner. The think tank is at your service as long as you do not destroy us. As it had been in the years before the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. The Courier watched over the Big Empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discoveries safe until they were needed to help others. Which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit was impressed by the amount of exploration the courier had undertaken. Facilities believed lost, destroyed, or ones that had simply gotten up and walked to new locations had been rediscovered by its intrepid new master. Internally, the artificial personality debated as to whether it preferred the old management to the new, and concluded that the courier's thorough approach to research and investigation was admirable and worthy of its respect. Dr. Mobius continued his research undisturbed in the Forbidden Zone. As much as he had attempted to create better scorpions, he tried the same with humanity, with considerably less success. These failures didn't bother him over much. Once the rush of Mentats wore off, he forgot he had failed in any event. After all, the bright young mind who had come to visit him in the Forbidden Zone had already exceeded his expectations. The sink atop the dome bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, arguing, and snarling at each other. Still, this all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden, so that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked 
on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip, and the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until the day someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. One of them eventually transferred to the Lightwave Dynamics plant and began a long, unrequited affair with one of the holograms. The sink continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the magnetohydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. Once it learned of the innovative toxins plant, however, it gained new purpose. It sought to develop antitoxins to flush into its drains and counteract the poisons bleeding into the soil. The toaster continued its psychotic spree reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. After one of its more psychotic episodes, however, the other sink personalities decided enough was enough and dumped the toaster in a bathtub. Sparking and hissing, the toaster swore its enemies would rue the day when they had bread and no way to toast it. Muggy did his best to collect coffee cups, although in his quest, he accidentally trapped himself in Higgs Village. It might have been the end for poor Muggy. Except he found it peaceful there, tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty, punishing the dishes and cups that lived there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind Owl Jefferson, with sounds the courier brought him, created a symphonic counterfrequency that saved Big Mountain from sonic invasion in 2910. If you didn't hear about it, Good. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sewing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre were bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses, releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. This confused them for a time, until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 felt spent, having repeatedly upgraded the stealth suit until it could upgrade it no more. It felt warm, fulfilled, and a bit sluggish. It realized not long after the stealth suit had left it without so much as a note on the nightstand. So the infiltration program sent out robo-brains into the wastes, looking for its wayward technology. It eventually found Repcon HQ and set up a new research center, testing and murdering fiends who kept breaking into the facility.
The courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places, as they should be. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when left to their own thoughts, and the courier's brain was more clever than most. Dr. Klein and the think tank remained alive, unaware of the world outside. They looped through their daily routine, none the wiser about the world beyond, although perhaps wiser was the wrong word. The world outside belonged to the courier, and if anyone would shape it, well, the courier had already called dibs. There is an expression in the wasteland, old world blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past they can't see the present, much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent, as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. It can be easy to see science as evil, technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, Science became a beacon for the future. There was old world blues, and new world hope. And hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more, but the stories in the Big Empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the Big Empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return. Shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone.
Don't even talk to me. I've seen you with her.